A good way to understand how a computer works is through a guided tour. The tour will introduce you to the various components of a computer system and explain how they work together. Let's begin with the system unit case. This is a metal case that houses components such as the power supply, motherboard, the CPU, RAM and ROM, disk drives, expansion cards, and a few other odds and ends. The system unit case gives you access to the on-off switch, contains an LED that shows when disk drives are active, and might also have a security lock and a reset switch. The back of the system unit case is much more interesting than the front. Here you can see where air exits from the computer, where the power cord comes into the computer, where the keyboard cable is attached, and where the adapter connectors are located. The adapter slots that are not in use will be protected by metal covers. Now we'll move to the inside of the system unit. Every computer has a power supply that converts 120 volts of AC to plus or minus 5 volts and plus 12 volts of DC. The power supply is found in the back right of the system unit case. It's a silver box with a prominent warning label. There are no serviceable parts in a power supply, and it holds the potential for administering a powerful electric shock. So don't even think about trying to repair one. The power supply also performs a few other important functions. The computer's on-off switch is located on the power supply, as is the cooling fan. The cables running from the power supply to the motherboard and disk drives provide electricity to many other components. The most critical component of a personal computer is the motherboard. It contains the microprocessor, ROM, RAM, the bus, expansion slots, and support circuitry. It's also known as the system board, logic board, or planar board. The microprocessor, or central processing unit, is the integrated circuit that does the processing for a computer. In most PCs, the socket for a math or numeric coprocessor is located beside the CPU. Near the front of the motherboard on the left side are the RAM chips that provide primary storage for the CPU. Programs, data, and the results of processing are stored temporarily in RAM. The number and type of RAM chips will vary greatly from computer to computer. The ROM chips that contain BIOS and other system programs are a little harder to spot than the CPU or RAM chips, chiefly because they are located in vastly different places on the motherboard. Fortunately, ROM chips are relatively large with 24 or 28 pins and have a label showing the version number. Some computers will have an empty socket or two for additional ROMs. Somewhere near the CPU are the clock crystal and the clock chip. These two components determine the speed at which a computer operates. The crystal is mounted in a small metal casing and is located near the CPU. The clock chip can be found between the crystal and the CPU. On 8286 and higher computers, there is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor CMOS chip in the back right of the motherboard. This battery-powered chip is actually a type of RAM that holds configuration information about the system. At the back of the motherboard, you will see a row of slots that lets the computer communicate with peripheral devices through adapter or expansion cards. These cards are held in place in the slots by edge connectors that hold the card in place and provide a path for the exchange of data between the system unit and the peripheral device connected to the adapter. Short slots are for 8-bit adapters. Long slots are for 16 or 32-bit adapters. In this example, the keyboard connector is located at the back of the motherboard. It's a circular connector that can usually be found beside the adapter slots. Sometimes, however, you'll find the keyboard connector located at the lower front of the system unit. Somewhere in the back right corner of the motherboard will be the power supply connector. 
The voltages from the power supply are distributed through the connectors to the motherboard and to the components connected to the motherboard through the expansion slots. All of these components have to communicate with one another. They do so through a pathway of fine wires or solder tracks on the motherboard called the bus. The wires on the bus are also called traces. Before leaving the inside of the system unit case, we should take a look at the most popular secondary storage device, the disk drive. One or more disk drives can be found inside the system unit case in the right front corner. Internal disk drives have at least two connectors. One is a power connector that accepts a plug from the power supply. And the other is a data connector that allows data to be transferred between the disk drive and the disk drive controller card. The controller is an adapter card that fits in one of the slots on the motherboard and exchanges data between the computer and the disk drive. In other PCs, you may find the controller physically integrated on the motherboard. Let's move out of the system unit now and take a look at the keyboard, the most commonly used input device. It communicates with the computer by a cable that plugs into the circular keyboard connector. Now, close behind the keyboard in popularity are the mouse and the trackball. Both are considered to be pointing devices because manipulating them causes the cursor or pointer on the computer's screen to move. A mouse or a trackball features two or more buttons that enable the user to select commands from menus or dialog boxes on the screen. The most useful output device connected to a computer is the video monitor. Resembling a standard television, a video monitor is also called a video display terminal, VDT, a video display unit, VDU, or cathode ray tube, CRT. The video monitor is connected to the computer through a video adapter card inserted in one of the slots in the motherboard. The printer is far and away the most prevalent permanent output device. As is true with video monitors, there are countless printer options available, but they can be broadly grouped into two categories. Non-impact printers depend on heat and inkjet or laser technology to form letters. Impact printers create an image by pressing a character shape against an inked ribbon, which in turn transfers the shape to paper. Dot matrix printers form the character shapes from a matrix of pins, while fixed character printers use a fully formed letter to create an image. One of the earliest forms of intercomputer communication was accomplished through a modem, a device whose name was derived from the terms modulate, demodulate. A modem converts digital computer signals into analog signals that can be sent through standard telephone lines. When equipped with a modem and the proper software, a computer can communicate with other similarly equipped computers. A recent innovation in telecommunications is the fax modem, a device that looks and works much like a standard modem. The chief difference between the two is that a fax modem has the additional capability of communicating with fax machines. There are other components that might be found in a computer system. They include external disk drives, image scanners, and network hardware. We'll introduce you to these components in various study units.